Hey guys, Hayden here. As you can see in the background, I have a new program open. This program is called Game Maker Studio 2. Uh, it's a software developed by YoYo Games. Um, it's been around for <laughs> probably 10 years at this point in different versions. Uh, but uh, this is a game development software uh, IDE that I really enjoy using. I'm pretty familiar with it. I've been using this for what well, feels like a decade at this point. Uh, channel veterans might recall old, old videos that I have of Game Maker 7 and Game Maker 8 uh, programming tutorials. Um, and now I'm using this game or this program in order to uh, make games. That's like the goal here. I'm trying to trying to be an indie game developer and my IDE of choice is this one right here. Um, so over the last couple of weeks I've been practicing uh, programming and uh, indie game development using this program and uh, I made a little project here. Some of you might think that this little dinosaur guy is uh, very reminiscent of uh, another game that already exists and that uh, would be true. It's basically a copy of Google's uh, Dinosaur Auto Runner. Uh, my thought process being, hey, I want to make a game to get back in the, into the game development mind headspace, and uh, I need to practice and get the remove the rust on my uh, my coding my coding knowledge and. What better way to do that than to make a quick demo game, essentially? Um, and so instead of coming up with an original, a completely original uh, game idea and building it from the ground up, uh, I just decided to clone a, an existing game and then add in my own uh, extra gameplay mechanics on top of it. And the game I decided to clone was Google's uh, Auto Runner Dinosaur Game. Now. I guess I'll just uh, open the game up now. All right, so here is my little window game called Dino Dilemma, and as you can see, it, uh, <laughs> like I said, looks very similar to a game that Google has made. Um, there's a few key differences which I'll explain shortly. Uh, the game is not complete. I am still working on it. I hope to have it done within a week. There's a few bugs I need to fix, and also a few things I need to create and implement. Um, one of them being a functioning high score page. Uh, another being music. As you can tell, there is no music for this right now. I need to make a couple songs, one for the title screen and high score screen, and then one for later on in the in the level where it's uh, where it's, the game sped up quite a bit because you've made it pretty far. For those of you that don't know, um, in Google's version of this game, basically you have to jump over cacti and duck under pterodactyls in order to survive long enough to, or in order to survive. And the longer you survive, the more points you gain, um, and the faster the game comes at you, essentially. So you have to react quicker the longer you live. So I've successfully uh, recreated that concept. Um, as you can see here, I have uh, the ability to duck down, a uh, tall jump, and a little jump, and that's obviously I'm on the title screen now, so there's no there's no obstacles flying at me. But as soon as I hit enter, you'll start seeing them. However, I did decide to add a new mechanic to the game, which would be horizontal movement. So right here, you can see me moving left and right about three tiles width. Um, and you can do that in midair too. Uh, I didn't need the player to be, be able to move like incredibly far. Just I wanted a little bit of movement. I might even change it down to two uh, movement spots, but we'll see about that. And uh, so let's just jump right into the game. You can see in the top right I have a score counter and a level counter. Um, you start at level zero because makes sense. And here's the the reason for my. Uh, horizontal movement mechanic. You see these meteors flying down from the sky, quickly notated by a little exclamation point 
telling me where they're going to spawn at. And the idea here is you need to not only jump over cacti and duck under uh, pterodactyls, but you also need to move out of the way of these falling meteors. And it really adds a nice layer of complexity to an otherwise simple game. So now you need to be focusing on two things at once, essentially. Oh, and I'm dead. So I made it a level four there, and as you could, as you probably could tell, over over the the course of the level increasing, uh, ob uh, obstacles and meteors started moving at a quicker pace. Uh, I might change it so that the meteors don't increase in speed because they become incredibly hard to dodge uh, at, at levels higher than like five or six. But uh, I mean that's the basic thing there. Um, we'll do one more run really quick, not to drag this video out. But you can see I'm I'm able to duck jump and uh, if you jump over the low pterodactyls you have to if you try to jump over the tall ones you just can't make the jump no oh, and I died I wasn't paying attention to the uh, exclamation points notating where the meat is we're gonna fall you can see I got a nice game over screen and some nice uh, nice bugs over here you can see my uh, particle emitters are wigging out and not being deleted for some reason I think I know why though. That should be an easy fix. But there you have it. That's that's uh, the Dino Dilemma in a nutshell. All right, now we're back into the program itself. Um, as you saw during the game, I uh, blatantly copied a lot of the mechanics and art uh, that the Dino Auto Runner uh, Google made, uh, simply for efficiency's sake, like. I could have easily made my own completely original art and completely original concept, right? But like, it would have had the same effect. I would have, I would have learned the same amount of programming. This whole goal of creating this was to get the programming aspect down. Weeks prior to this, I was working on art. You know, that's where those pixel art episodes came from. It's my, it's my intention to um, train all aspects of indie game development right i need i want to be a decent artist i want to be uh, be able to program games and soon i'm going to be going to be continuing to tinker with uh, that sunvox program so i can make some music for this game and if i can combine all three of those things i'll be able to enter into game uh, wow i'll be able to enter into game jams by myself and be able to create games start to finish all by myself and be able to develop a portfolio of projects that uh, are meaningful and complete because I'm notorious for not finishing anything which is a plague that I'm trying to uh, get rid of but anyway um, many of you are probably familiar with game maker studio and GML uh, as a language it's uh, pretty Intuitive, I think. I, I, like I said, I've been using this for nearly a decade at this point. So, I, I, based on my past knowledge and my uh, ability to Google uh, and peruse the Game Maker Studio community for ideas and, and questions and answers, I was able to create this um, mainly, mostly complete, uh, little simple auto scroll and platformer type thing i'm pretty happy with how it's turned out so far there's a few things i need to add like i said i need to add a high score and fix a couple small bugs and uh, create the songs and after that it's basically done i'm going to be uploading the completed project uh as an exe in the next video on youtube that i upload about this and uh, i hope you guys really look forward to that it shouldn't be too long like i said i only have a few things to do left and uh, I might add a couple extra mechanics. I have, I have a few ideas for mechanics that I might add. Uh, we'll see. I'd like to get the game completed before I start adding in more more stuff. Because at this point, it is a it is a it is a completed game mechanically. It's just adding a few finishing touches and uh, whatnot. That's all I got to do. So uh, that's that's what I've been working on. Expect. Uh, videos that I make on YouTube to be anything to do with my pr 
progress uh, in relearning uh, Game Maker Studio 2, my progress in creating music using Sunvox, and my progress uh, with pixel art. I'll probably probably be uploading a variety of all three of these things. Like I said just a little bit ago, in an effort to uh, be able to solo develop games. That's like that's the goal. I want to be want to be an indie game developer and outsourcing and purchasing um, talent essentially for artists or sound designers or audio designers or programmers is just not something I'm interested in. I would like I would love to be able to do it all by myself. So I'm slowly but surely working towards that and uh yeah the next step is uh once I get all three of those avenues sort of up to par or acceptable. Uh I'm gonna be looking into some game jams. Um I would love to participate in Ludum Day, but uh I'll have to look into when the next one is. I know they do three a year. That would be that'd be a huge, huge thing for me if I could participate in that and actually complete a game in the weekend. I would love that. But there's also other game jobs happening all throughout the year. So I've been I've been peeking at schedules for those and trying to get an idea of my time frame here and uh it's looking promising. Twenty nineteen's uh, looking to be a good year. I hope you're as excited as I am because uh I think I can make some real good progress this year, and uh, I'm really excited about that. Anyway, thanks for sticking around to the end. Uh, look forward to the next video, and I'll see you guys then.